Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Gunjan, and a very, very warm welcome to all of you to Rethink the Future webinar series hosted jointly by VMware, a world leader in virtualization, and the Guild, India's first progressive media business brand with a unique editorial focus on innovation, technology, business, leadership, and design. We will be now starting the session. Uh, I would like to begin the session by welcoming our moderator and session chair this evening, Mr. Nilay Varma, who is the CEO and co-founder at Primus Partners. Mr. Varma has over 22 years of experience with working with government, multilaterals, and private sector organizations across 25 countries. He has created and led India's largest consulting practice across infrastructure, government, and healthcare. So a very, very warm welcome to you, Mr. Varma. I would also like to now introduce our power packed panel for the evening, and I will begin with uh, Mr. Prashant Singh, who is the Director of IT and Chief Information Officer of Max Healthcare. Mr. Singh has over 23 years of experience in healthcare, IT, computer education, project management, software development, and system administration with 19 years specific to healthcare IT setup and delivery. A very warm welcome to you, Mr. Singh. Thank you. The next panelist I'd like to introduce is Mr. Vinit Pushpotman, who is the Group Information Officer, Aston DM Healthcare. Mr. Pushpotman has over two decades of experience in leading technology, enabled and transformation across retail, education, and healthcare sectors. I, a very, very warm welcome to you, sir. Thank you. Our next Thank panelist is Ms. Pooja Chhatrat, who is the Chief Information Officer, RJ Pop Healthcare, Prahubia, India. Ms. Chhatrat is an information technology professional with over 18 years of industry experience. A very warm welcome to you, Ms. Chhatrat. Our, uh, our next panelist for the afternoon is Mr. Girish Koper, who is the General Manager of IT Walkhard Hospitals. Mr. Koper has a total experience for over 25 years in textile, manufacturing, and healthcare domains. He is the functional IT head for Walkhard Hospital Group. Secretary and Principal Founder of Health Information Technology Association, connecting IT personnel across various hospitals and India. A very warm welcome to you, Mr. Koper. Yeah, hi. The last but not least, I'd like to introduce Mr. Alok Bhertia, who is the Senior Manager of System Engineering, VMware India. Mr. Bhertia is a seasoned professional with over 24 years of experience in driving digital transformation journey across different industries. Once again, thank you all for joining the panel today and a very, very warm welcome. And now I'd request Mr. Varma to take over the proceedings and uh, the panel discussion. Over to you, Mr. Varma. Thank you. Thank you, Gunjan. Uh, thank you, Gunjan. Um, we've got a great panel today. And uh, let me just start by uh, recounting something that the Prime Minister Modi said just two days back on June 1st. He essentially said there are three things on which I would urge maximum discussion and participation. One is advances in telemedicine. And he said, can we think of new models that make telemedicine popular on a large scale? And the, so the discussion today couldn't have been more topical, couldn't have been more relevant. Uh, before I really come to our participants and, and, and our panelists actually uh, for their point of view, and there are a number of things that we want to discuss, I just wanted to highlight a few things that have been happening. Um, while we were fighting COVID and we still are fighting COVID, uh, the reality is the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare along with ETIO has come up with guidelines that will enable registered medical practitioners to provide healthcare services, including telemedicine. I think many of us are aware of the fact that the National Digital Health Blueprint was proposed in 2019 to establish and manage health data infrastructure for seamless, seamless exchange, uh, promoting open standards, developing several digital health system. Uh, my understanding is it is in a stage of advanced approval where uh, where the government and ministries are, are working towards its early finalization so that this can be made reality. But we're talking about digital health and I, and I think it's, it, it, it's, it's always good to understand the definition of digital health. And, and, and I've picked up the definition from World Health Organization which essentially defines it as a broad umbrella term encompassing e-health as well as emerging areas such as advanced computing sciences and big data, genomics and artificial intelligence. And the reason I picked this up 
is very often we tend to, uh, in my view, look at digital health in a rather limited a view rather than its broad spectrum. And that's why I think the definition of WHO is very, very relevant. All in all, it's a great time for us to be discussing about digital health. And let me just quickly dive into it. And, and, and Prashant, if I could start with you, and I'll also request Alok uh, to chime as well. Um, you know, we've seen COVID-19 having impacted all industries, uh, which have also recognized the need for not just digitization, but digitalization as well. So what are the digital transformation priorities that you have brought forward in your healthcare ecosystem because of the unfolding pandemic? Over to you, Prashant. See, the moment, uh, uh, you know, COVID hit uh, the Indian country, basically. So the first and foremost part, actually, which was in the discussion was, you know, when the doctors are sitting at home, how to contact the patient, basically. The first thing, you know, came in mind as teleconsultation only. So I, I will not... Uh, you know call it as telemedicine the telemedicine you know has several other parts also as a component basically so so we started uh, you know teleconsult immediately after the covid uh, was announced as a pandemic so and and we could see uh, really you know it is still ramping up and it went up to up to 30 percent of the overall uh, consultation which is actually happening across panmax so that was the level basically and doctors are quite comfortable maybe if you, if you see the pre covid scenario doctors was you know doctors were not very comfortable using the telemedicine uh, you know uh, the platform but still you know i can see uh, uh, whereas you know if we are talking about all the components of telemedicine still there is a lack and challenge actually which is coming uh, for the continuity of the care if the patient is already admitted so we had you know carved out the teleconsultation model out of the uh, you know existing ecosystem so it took a lot of time actually to integrate with the existing emr which is being used at, at max healthcare now i think doctors can re uh, you know really you know see the cont uh, care continuum also across uh, the the patient journey basically it is it is going very well and uh, and i can very well foresee that it will further ramp it up uh, in, in terms of specifically uh, if we uh, talk about follow up of the patients basically patients actually who are coming out of the upcountry markets so it is going very well in, in that sense the only you know challenge still i i see that uh, in terms of monitoring the vitals from the patient side because now what happens is we are dependent on the patients to you know upload their historical records or the vital signs that is one thing actually we will really have to you know see towards the wearable devices uh, to actually get integrated with teleconsult or telemedicine. So that is the next step actually, which I can see uh, it'll, it'll take it to the further level. Absolutely, Prashant. And, and I think we will talk a little bit about it because uh, you're right, teleconsultation to move to telemedicine, we need to you know, include medical devices, uh, certainly. Right. Uh, but, uh, but Alok, if I could come to you, uh, you know, give uh, the same question with a, with a wider lens, um, what is the what are you seeing as the digital transformation priorities uh, that Indian healthcare ecosystem is looking at at this point of time? I think uh, uh, thanks Nilay for that question. I think Prashant set the context very rightly uh, that you know it's, with that sudden situation of COVID, definitely uh, what we are also seeing and uh, when we interact with customers like uh, the extinguished panel here. What definitely we are seeing that uh, healthcare IT suddenly gets into that got into that kind of a situation or a pressure to meet the expectations of uh, reaching out to the patients in a different way. So uh, as uh, uh, mentioned by uh, Prashant, like telemedicine or teleconsultation became one of the most priority areas to look at. Now, obviously, like he mentioned, that the need of having a seamless experience for the patient as well as for people who are taking care of the patient which is essentially the doctors or the nursing staff or people uh, at the back end who are possibly controlling the or you know man uh, you know uh, uh, giving access to the different systems at the back end all of that has to work together so i think the first and foremost we definitely saw the sudden burst of requirement of looking at hey can we make sure that the IT systems, whatever we have in place, are able to scale to the needs of this current situation. And that's where a lot of organizations have come up and said, 
uh, you know, possibly looking at different aspects of uh, whether they have were running a lot of things on private cloud, then suddenly the need of moving sudden aspects to public cloud because the sudden compute power requirement because of this sudden need definitely drove a lot of decision making in terms of can I start posting these applications to in a different way and still get to the uh, crux of solving that basic problem of can I reach out to the patient, can I give a better care uh, to the patient and then can I make sure that as uh, Prashant said there is a care continuum, there is uh, definitely a mechanism by which I should be able to continuously monitor the patient. That definitely puts a lot and lot of pressure on the IT systems. And that's what definitely is a trend what we are seeing. And we are trying to address those needs at this point of time that how can IT help, how can technology help in giving those kind of solutions, Nilay? Nilay, if I can come in here. No, absolutely. And I think, sorry, go, go ahead, please. Yeah, so beneath here. So, uh, so to add to add to what uh, prashant as well as alok uh, mentioned so there are two aspects one one the clinical aspect uh, prashant very clearly called out so the telemedicine uh, something that has been there for a for, for a good while now all of us know as cio and we've been it was always uh, it perhaps was the cart before the horse uh, scenario where we were trying to uh, tell people why don't you use it and they never found any any reason to use it and here yeah. was that great opportunity where they came back and told us give it to us right so yeah. nothing more can happen nothing more like so that that was a given there's another aspect uh, most of us coming from uh, the other sectors having worked in various other sectors i know many of us have been education like i've been in retail uh, various other sectors we already know that how healthcare technology uh, has not been up to the mark uh, healthcare always had two sets of technology. One was the whole biotechnology, the devices and all, they were state of the art. When it came down, came, came to running the hospitals, the administrative part of the technology and the keeping the light on, lights on part of the technology was always looked, was not invested in, was always looked as if all I wanted was a billing system plus a hotel management system plus a room management system, right? That's how you, you, you considered the hospital information system. Uh, which actually put a lot of pressure on the on the uh, on the CIOs and and the uh, technology leaders to deliver because there was never a priority given to them. Uh, which is why many of our solutions are still on premise. Many of our systems are uh, are not uh, are, are, are are not developed or not architected to scale like it is supposed to scale as of now. I seriously look forward uh, to this uh, particular event that has happened. So many of us would be now. Uh, getting a lot of support uh, to move our solutions onto the cloud. Uh, there'll be a lot of discussions around how do I make the access uh, to the patient record more secure? Because right now we never have to think about this because the person comes in to the hospital, accesses the record, and very very rarely do we get into that kind of discussion. So I look forward to many such discussions and a lot of efforts from uh, a lot of buying from the business and investments going into technology at this point of time, where uh, all of us uh, in the panel will get uh, not just attention, we definitely get attention, I, I'm sure, but also get a lot of uh, a little more funds and, and investments to put into technology solutions so that we make it uh, more cloud ready, uh, accessible across. When accessible, we mean secure access uh, so that we are sure that the patient data is, is on the uh, Vinit, you're so right. And, and you know, we've all seen the joke going on. Um, uh, on WhatsApp, it's saying, who is driving your digital strategy? Is it CIO, CEO, or uh, COVID-19? And, and by and large, everybody believes COVID-19 has really driven the digital strategy across sectors. And I think the point that you made, and I think uh, what this COVID-19 has shown is the need for us to have these solutions and which are also scalable, uh, you know, in very quick time. Um, uh, Pooja, if I can come to you, uh, you know, and one of the things as we are talking about uh, scale, uh, we are talking about uh, patient information, uh, we're talking about on the cloud, uh, we also keep hearing all the time around cyber crimes. I mean, you know, every day we hear the news about how cyber crimes is going up, especially during this pandemic. 
So when reliance on digital network is so much high, what intervention do we need to deliver a protected health information securely to clinics and affiliates? Uh, as far as protected health information security, which is becoming more and more important, because uh, healthcare data, as we say, we in healthcare we have a lot of data and a lot of information, and maintaining that data is a challenge itself. So, uh, and the second part is that healthcare information is very personal, and the selection of required data which needs to be secured, that is again a very important point which we need to take while uh, securing this data. Now, what makes sense to improve the life of the patients as well as organizations of healthcare across various aspects? I believe doctors, specialists, nurses, we all, they all have to make better decisions where when we keep this data more securely. So this, this will help the internal staff maintaining that better decision. So the importance of securing this data becomes a very important aspect for the organizations. And if, as we follow HIPAA compliances, as well as if I talk about my industry, we follow, like I come back from a stem cell background. So there we follow accreditations like AABB, wherein securing this data and reminding the staff that sharing of the sensitive data is very important. And uh, if we talk about like where, uh, it is not that only that we have to secure this data on the cloud. That is one part. It is internally also when we are sharing it internally, either with, the, with our business associates or with our cl uh, clinics or with any of our divisions. So what kind of data has to be shared? How much it has to be shared? Whether it has to be role-based security to ensure that uh, it is being in, in accordance with PHI or we or do we need to share the passwords how we can control it electronically like we are moving because now it's become a necessity that from manual all the data has to be electronically stored so how we'll be using the encrypted methods when sending this phi data electronically so these have become very important uh, these days and uh, now because of covid 19 the uh, we could take it as a plus point that companies are becoming now more, uh, they are taking it more aggressively that securing of this data on the cloud is more important as the investments that were made earlier. So as you rightly stated that joke and we need, we need to state it that how the investments are going on. So this is somewhere helping us how we can store it on uh, the clouds and how it can be electronically later not transmitted with the internal teams. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I do have a follow up question uh, for Alok when it comes to security. But before that, Kirish, if I can bring you in, um, you know, and I think it was it was it has been mentioned very often in the context of uh, digital health. Um, and, and really, the question is, is it time for India to move health and wellness out of hospitals into the hand of consumers and practitioners? How can we enable care anywhere, especially with mobile devices and more and more uh, smart devices are the norm uh, and, and and we're seeing a huge penetration going up. Okay, just to add yeah. what uh, Prashant and Vineet said, now this whole COVID has uh, become a game changer for the IT industry, healthcare IT, because since the business was it, people who are not able to walk into the hospitals needed some solution. So technology was the only solution which could run the business at that time during the lockdown period, the red zones, the people were wanting to talk to doctors, there were follows for not happening. So it is an opportunity as well as it has thrown up a lot of challenges for the IT industry because uh, as uh, Mr. Alok said, it also brings in the picture of uh, what you say, uh, security. Suddenly a CIO and a CISO has become as important as a CIO because there was no concept of a CISO. Because of this opening of uh, work from home and all, uh, this one more angle has come. And secondly, to add to this, now adoption of technology is becoming easier. And even in B2C, not only in B2B, a lot of doctors and general oh. practitioners have started using technology for their own uh, uh, clinics 
which they didn't believe prior to covid so this was just a continuation of what i wanted to add now coming back to your question yes now a uh, lot of startups have started realize the potential of the new healthcare it transformations and they are coming up with solutions for the b2b level as well as the b2c level where you can have your own health wallet sort of a thing there are applications which are being developed with which can care uh, capture your vitals because what a doctor needs on the other end is uh, he what was the uh, roadblock was uh, for teleconsultation is he couldn't feel the patient feel the temperature the pulse and all so these were all roadblocks if these are taken off i think uh, adoption of technology would be much easier and a lot of startups are working in the direction and there are a lot of use cases even if you see on your app store or your play store there are a lot of apps which are available which can capture your uh, vital so not that technology is not there it is only things to putting two dots together joining it putting in an application and build one complete solution for it. absolutely um uh, alok uh, uh, as uh, you know who just spoke about it uh, with connected healthcare like application mobile apps devices all being connected uh, and that's really the need of the day uh, what are cios doing to ensure that the it security and data is not compromised because this is a big challenge absolutely i think that's a uh, real real big concern because i guess healthcare organizations see more security incidents and attacks Uh, globally than possibly any other industry or even if it's not more if it it is as equal as what possibly any other industry sees so obviously uh, the aspect of looking at how do you protect health brand and obviously the other aspect is how do you secure data so both aspects are equally important now what we are definitely seeing is that a need for one is uh, if i am able to create an environment where Uh, on the technology side of things what we call as you know something uh, like a zero trust environment now typically what is a zero trust mean is that when i have a intrinsic security uh, i strengthen my data centers my my care systems and the endpoints also against threats ransomware uh, malware phishing and other breaches so that's definitely the first aspect of making sure that you know my possibly touch points are secure so when i say a uh, intrinsic security what i typically would mean is that security should be built in so instead of bolted on it should be built in so that's the first aspect what definitely we are seeing uh, as a demand so and that's what we are also trying to do the second aspect is how do i securely deliver the you know the customer or the patient uh, you know patient is the new customer for us right so mm-hmm. and the other uh, area uh, the other side is the clinics or even if there are affiliates or you know if there are organizations where the opds run uh, who are possibly feeding in to the uh, main hospital so how do i quickly deliver secure access to that patient information because that's very very critical and if there are affiliates how do i make sure that if i'm doing that or if i'm sharing that data how do i make sure that uh you know that is securely access and i bring in all kind of technology to make sure that security becomes a pertinent aspect because uh, like in this current situation uh, i think somebody mentioned that uh, today the access is happening from home uh, previously the only situation where the access was happening is possibly people were coming into the hospital and people were coming into a facility where the access was given to possibly dedicated machines uh through which i was giving access to the applications now it is people lot of people lot of ma- uh, management staff lot of uh, people are also wanting to work from home so how do i make sure those other devices which were previously not there in my scenario today for management how do i manage those devices also how do i manage those bring your home uh, bring your own devices which are working from home with technologies like a two factor authentication or even bring in security like a micro segmentation also into picture the third aspect which we definitely uh, mentioned and i think puja man mentioned that was how do i make sure that people i mean that's what it's very very essential how do i improve user compliance with hands on training that's 
definitely something required. So how do I streamline compliance? How do I provide users with a consistent and standardized learning platform to meet those uh, you know, standards? Securely simulate those threat environments to make sure that you are ready for it, right? It shouldn't come in by surprise. So that's the trend, uh, Nilay, what we are seeing. Can I add, to add, can yeah. I add uh, so, what Alok said, yeah. basically? Specifically yeah. on the security side, basically, secure, what I feel is security is a journey, actually. You can't accomplish the 100% secured environment. So just to give you a simple example, actually, even if you know you have uh, you know all sort of advanced technologies in place, even a vulnerability in one single application, which is internet facing, can can destroy the entire security security system of your organization. And these days, I agree with the, you know Alok because healthcare is getting the targeted uh, you know hacking attacks, mm -hmm. and I have uh, you know witnessed it. So so what I suggest is basically there should be a regularly cyber security majority assessment actually which needs to be done and then only actually you can very well uh, you know assess that which is the weakest link in the entire ecosystem in, in fact yeah I, actually if I, in fact prashant if i could just a little bit because i actually wanted to discuss that only with prashant and girish briefly but and i'll come back to you uh, because traditionally healthcare organization have looked at cyber security as essentially protecting the perimeter walls while all uh, while assuming all communication within the network is safe and authorized uh, we all know that in case of a breach especially for healthcare professional uh, organization we not just lose data but we can perhaps lose our patients as well uh, yeah. and so uh, and alok spoke about the fact that you need to create a zero trust security framework uh, how is it being done because one part is clearly solutions but how do you manage it end to end uh, Prashant, if I could get your views and then reach, and I'll come back thereafter. Very difficult uh, question, basically, by the way, to <laughs> just complete end to end. But whereas, you know, if you know, I'm talking about the cyber security security assessment. So you have to, you know, start from the firewall and go to the end point level, basically. So when I'm talking about firewall, so you have to take care of all the perimeter security, security, be it IDS, IPS, DLP, and SIM, you know, for that matter. Somebody has to con constantly monitor it, monitor it basically from the perimeter level and from endpoint level. I really suggest that actually it should be the next level of uh, EDR which needs to be uh, installed to get into it and the regular you know VAPT and all, all sort of these intrusion you know protection has to be there. Otherwise, I don't think so. You know you can really uh, you know safeguard the data. Yeah, uh, yeah Gish, do you I want to go next? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I agree with Prashant. There has to be continuous monitoring and see there whether there is a change in some pattern. There is a spike somewhere. Some machine is throwing out something. So uh, continuous monitoring is the only solution because you don't know what second what is going to hit. And the good news is what Vinit was saying. Now that IT is now becoming a revenue generator from a servicing, you can expect more funds to the IT. Previously, all your solution were on premise. If you see uh, off lately, I think four, four, four to five years back only now patients are able to get their reports online or they can log in, which was not there. So now we are in an evolving phase where we are uh, moving from on premise to the cloud or we are opening up our, uh, VPNs or where patients can come in. So the only solution is continuous monitoring, have the best tools. I don't see any other solutions other than this. Uh, Let, uh, yeah, please go ahead. Go ahead. So, one one thing that I uh, so I think it's important. Uh, two parts, uh, two two areas where I want to touch upon. One is uh, the whole aspect of uh, right now when you look at enterprise data, uh, even in a, in a healthcare environment, it has it's got patient data, it's got very uh, the other data as well. So, uh, the one of the areas where uh, where uh, it's a very simple. Uh, simple area but then what happens is uh, who gets access to what data that classification is is very important uh, and uh, who gets access to patient data who, the, it's only the care providers who should be having access to it so if you have if you, what i said in the beginning if you have a cloud system if you have a, a reasonably uh, a good system that you put in place your access can be controlled you can put controls in place so that who gets access to uh, what data that's one one basic uh, information it helps you control otherwise whatever we do uh, people have access to information that they shouldn't have and then 
uh, you don't know uh, who to control or who not to control. That's one thing. Second, second aspect is uh, we all know that the the biggest vulnerability or the the biggest uh, chink in the armor is from within. Uh, so good, good sixty percent of the uh, of the the larger piece of uh, uh, vulnerability or the attacks or potential attacks come from within, and that too not because of malicious intent. Uh, because of ignorance which is why uh, whatever tools we put in place uh, like when you ask prashant i mean it's very difficult to get to a zero uh, threat environment as to seal up everything you can do that if you decide to shut down all the windows and doors and sit in a dark room that you can but then the moment you want to uh, make things accessible uh, on one hand you want to make the, the patient journey simple the doctor's experience as as good as possible and they able to connect and treat uh, the patient well then you're bringing in a lot of openness. You bring in uh, layers after layers, and then your 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 uh, what do you call it? the whole information security aspect becomes uh, a bit difficult to really crack. So uh, you have to put the moment you put multiple uh, two-factor authentications, multiple layers of security, the experience is definitely going to get compromised. So the right balance is very important, and I think awareness plays a big one. So uh, what we've been doing is. So therefore, while we put the endpoint security, you put the best of email security tools, uh, the best of data loss prevention tools, the firewalls, uh, multiple layers. We still have to do a lot of uh, a lot of education. Uh, we have to tell people how to how they have to be careful as to what they speak because there is something uh, called as WhatsApp. No intent, no 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 uh, no harm to that. But the problem is uh, that's one of those easiest tools that people have. And uh, I need to tell, I need to educate people that it's not right to take a picture of a WhatsApp uh, of a particular uh, patient record and share it with another doctor because that's completely that's completely not allowed. So I mean, so therefore, a lot of education has to happen. Uh, people have to be uh, our, our colleagues in the business will have to be uh, told that what should be done, what should not be done, and you have to keep reminding them because we as we are another industry where we got uh, the attrition as high as 40 percent and 50 percent. Uh, so we have to keep keep uh, talking about it. So I believe that's one big component in spite of all the investments we do on technology. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, uh, Pooja, if I, you know, we're talking about security, end of the day, it's about data, it's about privacy. Um, and I wanted to shift a little bit away from security and talk about uh, electronic health records. Um, and my, my question to you really is, can the push, the current push for digitization improve EHR performance and availability in the country, especially given the prevalence of non-institutional private sector doctors and disparate IT connectivity across India. How do you see this? You know, how, how do you see this problem and, and the way forward for it? Well, uh, when we talk about electronic health records, yes, electronic records have become nowadays a must as per the compliance as well. If you talk about any of the compliances, if it is HIPAA or AABD or any other like in our industry we have nabl caps and all these kind of compliances wherein yes the electronic records is one of the parts which has become the must again accessing the records and how the user level security which has to be ensured and that records that is again one of the parts uh, which has to be taken care of and uh, we have to have a method wherein we keep these records in the encrypted methods using the encrypted method so that these these can only be accessed by the people as and when required because this is one of uh, these are the confidential data which has to be maintained regarding the patient it has not to be shared with everybody so that uh, encryption is one of the uh, must criteria which which needs to be maintained and uh, we also need to take care like in HI systems and all, we have the electronic health records. We have the provision of maintaining it. But we, if we talk about the diagnostic industry or if I talk about the stem cell banking, wherein I come from. So here the we were into a background where we were having a files maintained for each patient with not much of softwares in the industry. If primarily if I talk about stem cell banking only, there were not much of the software which as we have the HIS and the LIS systems. So we had to create the software for them, the in-house software which could help them 
to maintain these records and then how the control was made using the you mark uh, like the approver methods as we have the in the erps so that kind of controls have been built that kind of mechanisms with the help of the if i say domain experts in the organizations we we have used their knowledge and we have tried to create it that kind of environment inside the in uh, organizations and tried to translate it to the user that we should maintain these records and everything has to be maintained electronically so that it can be accessed from anywhere as in when required because maintaining if i talk about maintaining the papers manually like uh, in the files that and if you have to search for a file after 5 years or 10 years it becomes very difficult to have the same copy the manual copy in a right form it will be destroyed almost destroyed so maintaining uh, these records getting into the electronic version that that became very important not only for uh, the healthcare industries like hospitals but i would say it has been a part now being followed religiously with other industries as well like the stem cell banking yeah so prashant uh, yeah. how do you see 5g impacting healthcare ecosystem in india we are not even utilizing 4g actually uh, so let us not wait for 5g basically if we are talking about let me take it up uh, you know with emr first basically so we have been mm -hmm. talking about emr uh, since 2007 and the ministry of health and family welfare is working on emr standards since then only and and uh, and, and we are happy to know that the, we have our indian uh, you know standards for emr which is available and which is notified also by the government but but there is no mandate to use those standards across the healthcare system so far as of now so an emr was never a technology challenge it was always a, a adoption challenge actually and it is still a nice to have thing basically hmm. everybody understand the relevance of using the emr but still either there are a lot of issues you either there is a patient doctor ratio issue or or there is no mandate from the government so that is the reason doctors are still on their own to use any any kind of you know platform which they want to use and they are still happy to use uh, the uh, the pen and paper basically way but uh, i i feel that emr adoption is a governance issue basically once you know it is coming from the top that okay we have to use emr uh, and, and this is the advantage advantage everybody understand but it is it should come from the top so i i'll give you the example of the max because i have seen many hospitals i have seen you know hospitals where where they have best of the uh, you know technology which is available in the emr but still the adoption is very low uh, and i have seen hospitals where the the uh, level of emr is not up to the mark and it is not even user friendly but still the adoption is very high why because the mandate was there from the top management and max is one of the example and there is a lot of push you know uh, from the clinical research department so it is a back driven approach that for example clinical research uh, you know wing wants this so so it cannot you know happen if you don't have the emr so that is the reverse engineering actually which is happening most of the organization what happens is since there is no research wing so what would you do actually if you will actually capture all the electronic health record nobody is aware so that is one aspect of emr basically the other you were talking about ai so definitely ai is ramping up no doubt about it in the healthcare industry but that is also the usage is very very low and i can uh, clearly see in in max the uptake specifically in radiology and pathology is very very high there are seven to eight projects which are already you know going on in the you know field of ai and specifically for covid uh, so we are actually using the ai platform which the algorithm actually is helping us to uh, you know get the positivity of the patient in terms of covid within 5 to 10 minutes and and the algorithm can clearly give us that okay this is uh false positive this is false negative and this is the borderline cases so because you know the rt pcr kit actually which is available for uh, you know diagnosing uh, the covid is is in a positive basically so this is really helping us and i think many of the healthcare uh, you know healthcare organizations have already adopted it so it is really you know seeing the daylight you right prashant and, and let me just go now to vineet and if i could uh, pick up uh, 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 to actually, we need to first to you and then uh, Alok, if you could also uh, look at this question. I mean, how can Indian organization improve the detection and remediation of compromised data center applications? Because that's really uh, one of the big challenges that we see 
uh, from a systems perspective? So essentially, uh, when we really talk about, uh, uh, you know, get a little bit deeper into why that compromise really happened, right? So, uh, and that's what we have been trying to do with a lot of organizations that can I start building in security uh, as part of the uh, security as intrinsic rather than bringing in security as a bolted on security. Now, what I really mean by that aspect is uh, that, you know, whenever why do uh, you know uh, compromises happen right so the compromises happen because of some loophole some uh, you know something which got left out somewhere right so uh, look at all aspects of you know what data is flowing what you know you know even if within let's say within the data center if uh, there are let's say virtual machines can i look at what packets are flowing between a virtual machine. So if there is a web layer, a data layer, app layer, can I bring in technologies like micro segmentation to make sure that, you know, I do not allow any other packet to flow between them, right? So the moment there is something you know, else flowing or the data is flowing somewhere else, I should be able to call it as something which needs to be really uh, uh, taken care of. Uh, now, the point is that definitely when we look at uh, if at all there have been some compromises, start looking a deeper dive into it in terms of looking at all aspects of uh, you know why that compromise really happened. So uh, instead of looking at in, in and start looking at pointers where there could be possible areas of leakage. Start looking at places where there could be even even the leakage could start coming in from the person who is sitting possibly at the billing desk. Uh, without an intention and here learning and here uh, aspects of coaching uh, the right methodologies or like processes definitely comes into picture and I think one major shift which we are definitely seeing uh, is uh, in the market what we are seeing is a more and more centralization of processes so that you are able to manage everything at one single place and you know you are able to uh, concentrate on aspects of uh, things what it needs to be concentrated about and then keep simulating your own environment like you know people have gone in and invested in a team of ethical hackers if i may call it within the system who keep on looking at possible vulnerabilities within the system itself to make sure that yes the systems are secure enough so that would be something which uh, uh, you know we should be looking at we need to, would you want to add to it? Although I have another question for you. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll, I'll, I'll attempt. So one thing is, I think I touched upon it. So one of the thing, uh, I guess, uh, would be would be to move on to a very clear cloud first strategy. Uh, mm -hmm. Getting onto a cloud first strategy helps. The, then comes the moment you do that, you can then bring in, uh, like Alok mentioned, uh, some kind of standardization in processes, uh, some some uh, some very clear uh a strategy around how do you how do you do the entire data transfers and etls between applications you can bring in a, a secure middle layer in between uh, you can you can get a lot of structure into the whole uh, whole process so that is that is the only way uh, you can then bring some control uh, that that said i think what i said previously again becomes important the classification of data and deciding what stays on premise what goes onto the cloud uh, when does it sync uh, what you what is left uh, on premise on uh, on caches or on servers on on premise there'll always be something because you want to have a, a continuity and business continuity in mind uh, again i always keep yeah, get get people back to the basic facts that uh, uh, while we have while we talk about the 5g's and the 4g's uh, we are we as a country has uh, is, is a is a large uh, Landmass, and we uh, and we stretch from uh, the, the entire length and breadth of the country is not consistent in terms of our telecommunication reach, uh, in terms of our networks, in terms of our power uh, uptime. So that's again in these COVID days when uh, when when I asked my people to work from home, uh, uh, like I'm not sure about how many of them are able to have a consistent power supply, a consistent network, uh, or an internet access. Those are not those are not things yet in our country that is given across. So therefore, in our all our all our strategy that we put in place, we we'll have to keep that in mind. That if I am somewhere uh, inside uh, a far reach within a city, I mean, it's a city great. 
if i am in a in a tier 2 or a tier 3 place i will also have to look at uh, look at how do i architect my solution so that i ensure that the continuity is there uh, so therefore yes so I, I to add to what alok said i guess we will have to we we'll have to be we we'll have to be careful uh, we will have to create layers and uh, ensure that uh, we, we 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 do not compromise another piece is uh, it's important that as healthcare cios we 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 will never be an it company we are a healthcare company uh, therefore mm. it's more about more about uh, creating the ecosystem which what many of us are into is to create the ecosystem work partners and very clearly work with uh, partners who can then provide us the necessary services whether it is to do do very periodical vulnerability assessments or whether it is to come and do assessment of our security layers or to teach our people everything i would take that approach then look at uh, having people within because that's not our core and uh, it's always better to reach out and uh, get it done with the experts uh, absolutely uh, pooja you, you know you've been very patient thank you so much for that but you know you've heard about uh, we spoke about the government of india promoting telemedicine certain set of rules came in uh, in march um, and i think at one level uh, the whole push is about minimizing inequality um my question to you really is uh, what are the key steps we need to take to mainstream telehealth across india because it's still why you know we many of us have said it's been there for the last 10 years the reality is it's very very uh, patchy and different and and not consistent so so really the question is how can we mainstream uh, telehealth across india if we talk about telehealth yeah it's been into our country since long but yes uh, it's not been implemented successfully because again the reason like today we have a situation where patient uh, wants to sit at home and instead of going to the hospital because they are worried about the current situation and they are understanding the importance of the telehealth whereas initially the things were when the patient wants to sit in front of the doctor and they they used to feel more comfort level when they are in the front of the doctor uh, the kind of guidance they are getting they feel like doctor is giving them one to one face to face interact the face to face interaction when sitting in front of doctor they are getting more consideration and they'll get a better solution that that's been the mentality that we have been working in since long so now technology is helping in changing that that you can be on the screen face to face also you can get a personal attention and you will be provided with the best of the solutions and surely this is helping a person in saving his time as i would say saving his time and time is money in today's time so the i would say that right kind of methodology or the right kind of marketing has not been done as on date to promote this so we need to make the customer or the end consumer understand the importance that what would be the benefits so uh, this this should with the uh, i would say with the situation which we are we all are in right now with such kind of in the situation now online market or the telemedicine or any of the products which are related to online they would grow so telemedicine would surely be the first one of it wherein doctor as well as the patient would be comfortable interacting which they were not and as the as the bandwidth level increases as we are able to provide right connections as stated like in urban areas it's fine but in rural areas the patients are not able to connect and talk so in that way as we have it in urban areas so that situations if if parallelly the hospital and the telecom companies or the telecom companies individually they start working on that so we can provide better solutions and better assistance to the people in rural areas also so these small steps would help it help telemedicine to grow on a very big phase in the coming era so i think the point that you make on on telecommunication companies is extremely good so absolutely uh, uh, prashant and girish if i can come to you uh you know uh, both of you are part of very large hospitals um and we are talking about telehealth and the potential how are indian hospitals and in your case for max and voca how are they unlocking the potential of telehealth and i ask this question because currently it's largely the startups which are dominating the space 
and so what are the key initiatives that you are looking at uh, uh, from your perspective prachant you could go first and girish then so how i look at it you know as far as telehealth health is concerned it is more uh, you know on the demand driven basically which i you know look at it just to give you a small example in this covid era basically we have recently started a package 15 days package for uh, you know monitoring and helping the patient who are actually home quarantined so what we have done is it is a different way of telehealth you can say basically so in this what we have done is we have supplied you know few uh, 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 appliances including you know pulse oximeter bp machine thermometer to the patient you know as soon as they just enroll it for the package and then we connect through the technology of say video consult or things like that for regular monitoring right from the nursing from from the team lead and from the doctor side also so this this is again and it is taking up you know very well in in the current scenario this is one the for the patients who are not residing see patients who are residing in the metro basically they are not comfortable with the telemedicine uh, they are more comfortable to actually have the interaction with doctor face to face this is absolutely straight people who are actually coming out of delhi for example out of metros and for first interaction actually they are still you know willing to come to the hospital but for the follow up things actually tele uh, uh, medicine or the platform uh, is working and will be working very well uh, for them so that is uh, the uptake actually which we are absolutely seeing that will uh, I, i can foresee it in the future absolutely great yeah uh, as uh, pooja and uh, prashant were mentioning uh, indian patient was not very comfortable with the concept of a virtual opd he always wanted to see the doctor personally have a personal touch then he used to be satisfied but this lockdown and all different dimension to the patient's uh, attitude also now with the travel restrictions uh, and all he has accepted that the future is going to be tele health tele consultation so he has to adapt himself to the new this thing and yes uh, a lot of patients themselves are also understood and they are buying pulse oximeter bp machines as prashant rightly said hospitals are also providing but they we are also encouraging so that a uh, lot of consultations can be done secondly uh, tele health uh, now with this lockdown there are some patients who seriously need help like uh, we are having hospitals in the red zones like mumbai where people want to come to the hospitals but there are travel restrictions like there are psychiatric cases people are depressed there are people who are uh, uh, other issue uh, hypertension who want to speak to a doctor but they are not able to come uh, to the doctor even the gps are closed here now things are improving but then the only option which is is your virtual opd where uh, we do have started this virtual opd and now that we know virtual opd can be as good as an opd it is now uh, a good chunk of a regular footfall so now uh, our management has told us to like uh, post covid also we should look this as a uh, option to generate revenue where we can have patient engagement is a very big thing because a lot of people for their post consultation follow up consultation they don't turn up so this is going to be very good for a post consultation where you can talk to your patients give them knowledge be connected and even this is a good opportunity to push education and uh, marketing uh, 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 also it can be used for uh, for uh, education suppose a patient wants to know how to undergo tkr we can just push in a video of how a tkr is how a cb cabg looks like and then we can also push promotion so we can look at at from that angle also but i think uh, girish you you make the point of saying this could be an uh, it could be enhancement of revenue and and my personal view is it can be a enhancement of revenue and i think doctors are recognizing that two parts of the question one what's the biggest worry that you have in managing your operation and if you had unlimited amount of money what is that one thing that you would want to do that you've never been able to do pooja starting with you yeah the biggest worry as you already mentioned money that's the biggest worry the budget <laughs> yeah. and as the lockdown of the covid 19 it has more minimized the budgets the all the procurement as of now are stopped and the new 
uh, projects have also stopped which might grow which it will take some time and we'll be back to form that's for sure so yes budgets is the biggest worry and if i have been allotted with the budgets i would surely like to automate the entire uh, everything in the organization i believe in providing technology to the person sitting at who's sitting at our gate the guard till the lab person who's processing the samples so the entire cycle has to be automated in a manner so that if a ceo wants to see anything or the management wants to see anything starting from bottom to top they they can just have it in one click so that is that was surely my dream when i joined cryoviva somehow the budgets have not been so good that i have tried to automate all the sales processes logistics and lab but still there are some gaps so i would like to do it and uh, yeah, i think this was pro professionally Sorry. that i like to work yeah prashant to you so so if given the unbudget unlimited budget basically i would like to consolidate it. there are a lot of technology pieces all across coming out of different partners basically so i would like to consolidate everything so that the entire so it it should be meaningful and the entire the outcome should be absolutely meaningful and measurable basically this is one the other part is i want to take the emr to the next level so that even if required if the budget there is no limit of the budget i will give the assistance to the doctor also so that we can have the right uh, you know data which is coming into the emr and we are actually uh, you know reaping the benefit which is you know coming out of it basically these are two pieces basically just yeah. to summarize yeah thank you vineet if i have if i have the power and money to get things done i would just get everybody to get to the basics uh, get all those data structured get the uh, uh, emr adoption done by the doctors and so that then we have good set of data to really work on because that's that's going to be a real 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 game changer because uh, there is a huge amount of data but they have to be properly digitalized and kept in a form where it can be analyzed girish to you now yeah now that uh, the adoption of technology is becoming easier and and the non uh, clinical staff has started adopting technology what i would like to do is bring up the healthcare it to the level of it company where uh, it can be a virtual hospital people can work as if it is a lockdown people can connect from home work from home will become more easy meetings can be over a, a video call so bring the level of healthcare it to a it company that's that's what what i would pursue because there's Thank a big you. gap Hello. in a healthcare yeah. it and a normal it company sure alok last word to you i think uh, as i was saying so patient is a new customer so uh, what we would definitely would want to do with the healthcare service providers is possibly look at uh, how can we help in bring up budget to finance new application initiatives because uh, you know that would help drive the way uh you know new things are happening today right so uh, automate those manual processes whatever are there allowing uh, resource time for innovation in healthcare build a digital foundation to easily support both traditional applications as well as modern application because that's the demand of the hour run applications on whatever platforms you want to run it on uh, to make sure that you have the best performance and keep on giving the exceptional care and use those common tool sets to manage all your application environments uh, and leverage those existing skill set and finally give patients a predictable uh, consistent and delightful experience and help in uh, grow your care environment that would be my comment thank you hello ken um, you know this really kind of brings us to the close of the webinar but uh, I, there were lots of very very important and interesting points made but there were two or three things that that really stood out for me and i just wanted to uh, talk about that i think somewhere uh, all of you have mentioned adoption is about user experience uh, with that any any last word from the panelist otherwise i'll hand it over to gunjan